At the start of the First World War, not a single nation supplied helmets to their troops. This had devastating effects on the casualties due to the lack of protection from mostly shrapnel-related injuries. Therefore, the British War Office decided that a helmet was needed for sufficient protection. A man named John L. Brodie designed in 1915 the Mark I Brodie, which was accepted by the War Office. The design was an almost soup bowl shape that was made of a single thick sheet of steel. This meant that it was ideal for protection against shrapnel in the trenches, but it left the soldier without any protection from below the ears. The basic design of this helmet would remain relatively unchanged with slight modifications made until the final Mark V variation, which was essentially the same as the Mark IV but with an improved liner, was introduced in 1956. Instead of explaining all the different Brodie helmets that were used throughout history by the various nations, I will just be focusing on the British Mark II Brodie, as this is the one I have and it was the most widely used during the Second World War. In 1938, a new version of the Brodie was developed. The Mark II Brodie got rid of the Mark I's magnetic rim as well as introducing a new liner and elasticated chin strap. The actual shape and size of the shell remained very similar to the Mark I and is therefore easily mistaken from a distance as a Mark I. However, it is important not to get confused with the Mark I Star Brodie which was essentially an interwar modified Mark I Brodie. The Star used the Mark I shell but with a new oval cushioned liner. The Mark II Brodie was a standard issue combat helmet for the British Army from 1938 until 1944 where it was slowly phased out by the Mark III which is commonly referred to as a turtle helmet. So here's an example of a British Mark II Brodie helmet with netting. As you can see, it's in the standard army green finish and is in somewhat decent condition, clearly has been worn at some point. Now the netting on the outside of the shell is period netting and so it is a World War II style of netting and so it's assumed that this has been on here from the start. However, of course, this could have been reapplied later on. So if we have a quick look on the inside of the helmet, we can see that is in decent condition to the outside as well. And we can also see a few markings on the shell. We can see it's marked JSS for the maker Joseph Sankey and Sons. And we can also see that it is dated 1939. And we can tell this is a Mark II shell as these would not be found on a Mark I shell. So we can also have a look at the liner. Now the liner, is also marked on the inside there. If some of you can see that, JCS and W Limited. Now this is for J Crompton and Sons Web, and it is also dated 1939 with size seven on it. Now I'm sure some of you will have noticed, hold on a second, this is not the standard World War II Mark II, I should say, liner. This is actually the transitional Mark I star liner. And you'd be right. And we can tell this, of course, by the oval, um, the oval cushion at the top. Now, I can't think of a 100% reason for this, but if I'm looking at online uh, and a few forums I've looked at as well, I've actually found out that this maker is not uncommon for this maker of the liner, Jay Crompton, to use this type of liner. Now, this is 1939 dated, and so if I'm using my brain a bit here, I can kind of come to the assumption that maybe if it was an early 1939 issue, for example, there might have been some of these liners lying around. And so they might have ended up using these on these helmets, even though they should have probably used the uh, standard issue Mark II one, which is a cross as the base instead of that oval cushion. If there is any other reason, then you know why, please comment down below because I can't actually think of another reason for it. Also, we can see that it does have the Mark II elasticated chin strap, which is not like the Mark I. Uh, we can also see the way it is fixed in there. We can tell that it is a Mark II. So very weird, got the Mark I Star transitional liner, Mark II elasticated chin strap and a Mark II shell. So uh, yeah, not your, your usual kind of Mark II helmet you'd see, but still a really nice example. So it's very interesting, Brody, this is, you know, of course we've got the uh, different aspects of it with the liner and the shell. Um, it would be really appreciated for myself if you could comment down below the reason for this. I can't think of any other explanation why the transitional liner is in there. Um, but it'd be much appreciated if you comment down below. Um, I will end the video off with some close-ups of the helmet itself uh, for anyone interested, um, you know, clearer photos of the makers, etc. Um, I know it's been a while since I last uploaded a video. I've just been extremely busy in the last uh, couple of months. And so um, I still am a bit busy, but it's slowing down a bit and soon I will be able to have a lot more time to upload. Now, I really do appreciate all the support because even though I haven't been uploading for about two months now, there's been comments still, there's been likes, there's been loads of views on the videos. And so I really do appreciate all the support. And that's it for today. A new video will come out, of course, in the, the next few weeks when I get the time to do it. 
Uh, don't worry, it won't be two months until my next upload. Um, so yeah, that's it for the video today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.